everything that you will, God. So hungry, Lord. So thirsty, Lord. So hungry, Lord. So
so hungry, Lord, so thirsty for you, for everything that's about you, for everything that you willed, oh God. For everything that's about you. For everything that you desired. So hungry, Lord. So hungry, Lord. Jesus. So thirsty for you. So hungry, Lord. So thirsty for you. For everything that's about you. For everything that you willed. Oh, God. For everything that's about you. For everything that you desire. So hungry, Lord. So thirsty for you. So hungry, Lord, oh God, oh God, oh God, so thirsty for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, as you begin to worship the Lord and you give yourself to this place of being continually filled with the Spirit, God will develop something in the inside of you that cannot exist otherwise. He'll develop inside of you an explosive divine expression that will be the utterance of the Holy Ghost in prayer and prophecy. Huh. It goes beyond the song and it goes beyond the thanksgiving and you know, I know that God is so earnest to see the body of Christ, His church, begin to function in the manifestation of the Spirit. Where that the tongues can profit you instead of having no profit. Though you speak with the tongues of men and angels, it won't profit you if there's not certain things that you're doing, giving yourself to. God's purpose that there be increase. Hallelujah. And if there's anything that needs to happen in the midst of the church, if God's people to get so caught away in worshiping Him, and just, just caught away with the, with the affections of the heart. Don't be listeners only, but also be doers. You could be a doer right now if you wanted to be. Hallelujah. Let me just tell you where it all begins. It all begins in being hungry and thirsty. It all begins in being hungry and thirsty after righteousness. That's where it all begins. Hungry and thirsty after the things of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. That's where it all begins. It all begins where we, begin, where we just look at all that God has planned and desired for us. And we say, God, I just got to have that. I want that. Everything that is about you. Everything that you have willed. I just want that. I want that. I want it. See, people act like that somehow God hadn't done it. You act like somehow God's delinquent on his job. He's not. He's just looking for some empty vessels to be filled up. Hallelujah. And we say, oh God, I'm hungry for everything that is about you. I'm hungry for everything that you have desired. 
I hunger for you, Lord. Huh. Huh. You know what I like? Let me just tell you. I, I dance by the Spirit of the Lord. I don't just dance and jump around. I just dance and jump around. Uh, sometimes I think that we get caught away in the activities of whatever it is that we're, that we're accustomed to or what we think is good. But oh, when your heart gets carried away with thanksgiving, then you begin to dance in that realm, you see. Your heart's carried away with desire for God. I mean, the songs and the music is supposed to lead us into these realms, hallelujah. And if you can hook up with the spirit of it, it will. But if you just sing the words of it, huh, it won't. But if you hook up with the heart of it, it will. If you hook up with the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, he will do this. And the good thing is tonight, God and the Holy Spirit is here to strengthen you and help you, develop you. You don't have to feel like that somehow you're on your own. You got to wait 10 years. You're on probation. You're on evaluation. See if you fit. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is, Father is so good to us. Isn't he wonderful that he brought us on in? I've discovered that it is, it is a great grief to God's heart when we're all excited about other things and we're not excited about his things. It's a grief to God's heart. Isn't it, people? I'm going to tell you right now, the blabbing of the mouth, there is, I'm going to tell you right now, the more you talk, the more sin you got. God says in a multiplicity of words, there is no lack of sin. Huh? I pray in Jesus' name that everybody in this place tonight will learn how to talk to Father and enjoy the conversation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that you find yourself all through the day praying in the Holy Ghost and letting it turn in uvraha, to Thanksgiving. Ha <laughs> ha. And to, to Thanksgiving, I mean Thanksgiving that is expressed in, in words that only the Holy Ghost can speak. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now Papa wants to do this in your life tonight, so all you got to do is listen. Akatori manje kapusteya. You know, the, the last thing I like to look up, and I praise, I don't have to, praise God I don't have to see much of that here tonight, is look up on the platform and see somebody look all weird. You know what weird look is? Perplexed and, and uh, unhappy. I mean, all God's people, you know, are supposed to be filled, filled, hallelujah, with praise and thanksgiving and certainty. Amen. That's one of ha. Hallelujah. I have a responsibility. I have a responsibility. Huh? I have a responsibility to God to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. I have a responsibility in the kingdom of God to obey the Holy Spirit. To walk with God that produces joy and thanksgiving and praise and the ability to speak a word, a right word, the right word in the right, at the right time. And every time the right time appears is when somebody's there in front of me who's got any hunger for God. You know, God will give you an ability to see hunger in people's lives as soon as you get hungry. He will. As soon as you get hungry for God, you'll have the ability to see hunger in people's lives. Speak into that. You see, they might be all overwhelmed with downcast and afraid and fearful and hurt and upset. I was so blessed. Who brought that woman and her family here this morning? She's from the area. Who brought the, her? Jeremy, thank you so much. She said, I've been waiting for years to have this happen to me. That's what she told me. She said, I've been waiting for years. I heard you could feel like this. I've been waiting for years. That's what she said. You went out seeking to save that which is lost. I tell you right now, you get a right heart about it, God is going to give you fruit. You get a right heart about it, God will give you fruit. When all of a sudden you got to have it, you can't live without it. As long as you can live without these things, you can't have them because they're too sacred. And then the more get, Papa gives you, the more anointing you have in your life, the more accountability you have. And if you're not doing anything with what little you have right now, how could he give you more but, uh, and, not, and not hurt you? You see what I'm saying? Because if, if you're taking what, what you have, whatever it is, I mean, to, be, to have salvation, hallelujah, is a wonderful thing. You know, the Baptists did a lot with just having salvation. 
The Lutherans did a lot with just having salvation. The Lutherans, you know what a, a, a move of the Holy Ghost is in Lutheran church? Everybody starts hugging each other. Huh? It's, you know, that's what it is. Baptists, I mean, you know what a move of God is in, in the Baptist church? Everybody goes and brings a person to church. That's a move of God. And they keep the numbers up on the board so that everybody can see. And praise God. I mean, you know, whatever you have, if you begin to give it, you begin to just pour yourself out. You begin to you say, God, I want to be used by you. I want to honor you. I mean, just think about how people honor their bosses and they honor their governmental, government officials and they honor all these people in their lives, but yet they just kind of treat God like, like a stepmom or something. You know, it's pretty crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody you get around, whenever you, whatever, you, when you finally get around to it, maybe, kind of thing. Has that speaker been that loud that whole time? Yes. Give me a break, people. God gives wisdom, and out of his mouth proceeds understanding and knowledge. You can't have the speaker up that loud up there, out there. Go ahead, you can be seated. I hate doing sound design, trying to preach. You can't be blasting people's ears out. People just move. Guys back there, move around something. Come on now. God will help you. He'll give you insight. If there's anything we need help in is people understand how to run a soundboard. The, the issue goes on everywhere on the planet. Somebody said, well, if you're hiring people and paying for them, even if you're hiring them and paying for them, they can do it anywhere but in the meeting. It's true. Some people do sound design, they may be perfect at it. But they get in the meeting and everything they know just gets all messed up. Hallelujah. 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 Ha ha. Anybody happy here? Yeah. Any, anybody here full of the Holy Ghost? Yeah. You know what God has purposed and what God wants to produce is he wants to produce Jesus people. This is what God the Holy Ghost is doing. He wants to produce Jesus people full of the Holy Ghost who live by the word. See, it's a key word. That's a key phrase. Live by the word. I live by the word. Huh. That's like the army of God. They live by the breath of God. See, that's the word of God. Every word of God is God breathed. Huh. You want to understand what's going on in Father's heart, where the affections of his heart, what he wills, what he wants for your life? Just read his word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at his response to the things that people did when they rebelled. Look at his love and his mercy. Look at his response to people, his response to people who would just simply obey him and walk with him. And look at the blessing that is there. I'll tell you right now. And it's not like, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a, a reward system, as it were. It's just that you got, if you want to be blessed, you got to walk with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so hungry for you, Lord. I still hear it. Can you hear it? I can still hear it. I'm so thirsty for you, Lord. I'm, still, I'm so hungry for you. I'm so hungry, Lord. I'm so thirsty for you. Everything that is about you. Huh? See, that's right out of the heart. Where did I get that? I got that in that explosive thing called dunamis, it's, which can be related to dynamite. It's an explosion on the inside of me. I, it's a river that flows. It's prophecy. It's tongues and interpretation of tongues. It's a shout. You can have that too. Even if you can't sing, you can rap it, as it were. You can lift up your voice and you can begin. You know, back in the time when people knew how to function and flow in the Holy Ghost, you'd have group people together and you'd just hear one, prayer, one great, powerful, anointed prayer after another. It wasn't the strains of people straining. It was the sweet sounds, effortless sounds of the majesty of the Spirit of the Lord being expressed to them, but it's because they gave themselves to that realm. Because, listen, these things are not developed on the inside of you while you watch in television. These things aren't developed on the inside of you going and playing whatever games you like to play or doing whatever activities you like to do. These things are spiritual things, and they're developed on the inside of you as you give yourself to spiritual things. If you sow to the Spirit, what are you going to reap? You're going to re reap spiritual things. You're going to reap this realm of his divine life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This realm of rivers, this realm of explosive divine power and expression 
because God the Holy Spirit has trained you how to respond to Him. And now your emotions are being, as it were, developed to function in Him rather than being in prison to function in a purely human realm, responding to something, some joke that makes you laugh, some event that makes you happy, some event that makes you sad, some statement that makes you offended or hurt. Most people live in that realm. They're living in a prison. They're living under a restraint that God wants to, has come and liberated us from. Hallelujah. Uh, praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord God. People don't know it. They give themselves over to sin because it has such a powerful pull on them. And all it does is create for them death and destruction. You sow to the flesh and what are you going to reap? Corruption. That's right. And then we got folks staggering in between the two. And, you know, I believe that the people in this church are, are serious with God. But you're going to have to understand how to get a little bit more serious to where that he gets, to a little, gets some time to teach you. Hallelujah. The teachers come to teach you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has. You know, I want to, sometime I want to be able to go around and interview people and say, would you please tell me exactly how it is God the Holy Ghost teaches you? You know, most people are going to say, well, you know, they're going to come up with the phrases that they've learned in their catechism. They're going to come up with the phrases that they've learned in their Bible school and their Bible classes and what things are then taught them. But if I said, no, 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 I want you to tell me in all honesty before God how the Holy Spirit strengthens you, teaches you, empowers you, shows you how to move in the realms of the supernatural in terms of what you are actually doing. That's very different. You know, I have people, sometimes I have people, I say, I want you to write out for me the 10 principles by which you are planning on living by. But before I do that, I say, I want you to write out for me the principles that you are living by. Because the principles that they can say that they're going to live by, it might be perfectly good. But in reality, what they're going to do is they're going to live by the principles that they've already got established in their life. And sometimes that's not very many, you know. Praise God, there's some people going to be in the meeting every time the meeting's going on. Praise God for that. There's some people, I don't care if I was on the moon, I'd find, I'd, have, I'd, be a, I'd find a Holy Ghost meeting. If I was on the moon, I'd be in a Holy Ghost meeting. Why? Because I'm sold out to God. I'm sold out to God. Somebody said, oh, you mean are you telling me that being in the church is an example of being sold out to God? I, absolutely, you can hear very well. That's right. That's right. It's not religion. It is a realm of devotion. It is a place of being captivated with what Father wills. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to be in. I want to be in church. Somebody said, "Why do you want to be in church so often?" Because it's heaven. Well, don't you ever go on vacation from church? Church is vacation. <laughs> what are you talking about? Vacation from church. What is vacation from heaven? Is what? Hell. That's correct. So I think there's only one or two places. Huh. Father wants to train you. He wants to build you up. He wants to create an explosion in your life. So I don't have to, I just don't have to stand here and talk to a bunch of silent people where I wonder whether they're alive or dead. Whether they've met. Some people have learned to sleep with their eyes open. Have you ever run into those people? They're sleeping. You just don't even know. You don't even know. You don't even know. As soon as you dismiss the meeting, everybody gets happy and real talkative. Set so while, while you're sleeping, their eyes get all glazed over. They're yawning or fighting back yawns. But as soon as the meeting's over and they're out moving around talking to one another, they're excited. Why? Because, they're st because their realm of, of emotion and passion and affection is all wrapped up in the five senses. It's all wrapped up in the earthly thing. They've never given themselves to be trained by the Holy Ghost. God trains us in His Word. His Word is Spirit in His life. The more you give yourself to the Word of God, something supernatural is going on inside of you while you do. It's not going on inside of you while you talk. It's not going on inside of you while you're preoccupied with how beautiful the sunset is. It's not going on inside of you while you're out on a little nature walk. It's going on inside of you while you're giving yourself to the Word of God, the Spirit in life. He develops, with on the, he develops on the inside of us a whole new dimension of living, a whole new 
ability to receive from him and to cooperate with him and to move with him. He enlarges our capacity. He causes a part of our being that is laid dormant. All of our existence to come alive and then he develops it. Because, you know, that's how we begin. As newborn babes were just, you know, I've said this till I'm blue in the face and I still don't get much mileage out of it. I'm not quite blue yet. Sometimes I feel like, my goodness, can you, can you repeat yourself again? After so long a time as this. I tell people and they just look at me like, God's word is divine nourishment to nourish a dimension of our life called the spiritual. And the dynamics of walking with God is that you and I are supposed to desire the spiritual realm. Huh. But the people, I don't know, maybe people think that that's equivalent to their natural realm. I don't understand it. I don't get why there is a not a, reason, a reasonable response to God's wonderful opportunity that he's given to us, the open door to come and behold him. Huh. You know, who Rabaste. <laughs> Papa, he wants us to learn how to be filled with the Spirit. But if you're not going to be willing to say, you know, Lord, if, if, look, you can go all day long. He's like, go all day long, do whatever you want to do, minding your own thing. But what happens when all of a sudden you become every day earnest about being, you hungry, passionate to, to be filled with the Spirit, you want to do what God commands. There are people who go through their whole day, they don't even think one thing about it. They're so preoccupied with earthly, selfish, fleshly existence. I wish you'd stop that. <laughs> Praise God, it was a week, amen, but at least it was one. It was one. Praise God, it was more than three. There was a lot of silence in that one. There's people I saw, their lips did not move. You might have said it, you might have grunted it from deep in your diaphragm, but your lips didn't move. A man takes a movement of your lips. You can't go, oh, 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 oh. A man takes a movement of your lips. It's impossible to say. Try to say amen without any movement of your lips. Go ahead, try. Amen. No, no, try to say amen without moving your lips. Go ahead, try. Amen. Uh, 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 uh. Praise God for lips. They were created to praise him, not to go off and speak all your stuff. Those lips, somebody said, why did God form lips? So that I could praise him. That's what my tongues and my lips were formed for. Not to all the stuff that we want to give our lips and our mouth to. Father wants to develop you in the things of the spirit. You're going to have to understand there is divine nourishment. Without nourishment, what are you going to do? You're going to get sick. You're going to get weak. You're going to die. Uh, you know, I can see that everybody around here has been getting nourished. <laughs> Praise God. I've been in places where people aren't really nourished physically. It's pathetic. It's, so, it's sad. Your heart hurts for them. But just for me, it's just as bad when people are, not, are malnourished. They're not nourished spiritually. And they got a whole... They got a whole pantry full. They got a whole heaven full. They've got a whole, all that you need and all that you could ever want full of nourishment and that they don't eat. Can you imagine a people such a people? You would say they're crazy. That they were malnourished, walk around hungry all the time, malnourished, and they get a whole house full of food. Oh, mama sikita la la mahara hasti. Malanda la bekisti pretty. I want you to understand, doing the will of the Father and walking in righteousness are absolutely equivalent. Huh? Doing the will of the Father has been expressed to us when Jesus said, if you want to be my disciple, if you're any man going to follow, if any man is going to be, if any man's going to be my disciple, he's going to follow me. He's going to imitate me. He's going to do exactly what I do. Father's purpose to produce people who live out the life of Jesus Christ. Jesus people full of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Because a modern terminology for a Jesus, for a Christian is a Jesus person. Because that's what all they were saying when they said Christian. The few times that it said, the two times that it said, 
Christian with just saying they're a Jesus person. Hallelujah. They're walking in the same glory. They're walking in the same anointing. They're walking in the same heavenly realm. They're walking in the same place. They, they, they seem to be right where Jesus was. God wants to produce Jesus people full of the Holy Ghost who live by the Word and walk in the Spirit. Amen. I mean, can you just understand that there could be an op you could you could actually find yourself before the judgment seat of the Lord and God say, no, you had an opportunity. I wanted to walk with you and you wanted to do your own thing. You did not walk with me. He would say, well, you don't understand. We live in a new culture, a new time, a new society. We've got, all got to go to work. We've got opposition. It's the 21st century. I mean, they were saying things like that in the days of Enoch. Enoch had a, lived in a far worse, perverse world with far greater opposition. And he walked with God. I want you to listen to me. He walked with God. He did not have the word of God. Quit throwing a fit. He did not have the word of God. And he did not have the Spirit of God the way we have the Spirit of God. But he walked with God and he pleased God. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. Think about that. Because I'm telling you right now, he's the witness. He's one of the two witnesses. If you want to argue about it, I say he's one of the two witnesses just because of the way he lived out his life. If he's not one of the two witnesses, he's one of the big witnesses. And it doesn't make any sense that you make Elijah one of the witnesses. And the only other person that looks like Elijah with respect to the person who hasn't died is Enoch. I don't see why people have such a big problem over it, but they do, believe me. Of course, people have a big problem over everything in the Bible. <laughs> That's a big part of the problem. He's a witness to you and me right now. He's going to stand there. When you're standing there, if you're standing there in the, at the judgment seat of Christ and want to give some excuse, Enoch's going to be looking at you. Looking at Jesus. Jesus is going to be looking back at Enoch going, you know what? Come on, man. Enoch, would you please talk to him? You had it far worse than any of them. And you did not have a Bible. You did not have a word for spiritual nourishment. You did not have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You did not have the Holy Ghost released in your day as it is, was in our day. Because the Holy Ghost had not yet been given. That's what Jesus said. Do you understand me? The Holy Ghost had not been poured out upon all flesh. That's for sure. I'm certain that, uh, that Enoch had a measure or a dimension of the Holy Ghost because he walked with God. He was, uh, it may actually be that God himself came down and actually walked with Enoch. It may be more than just a, a term to express someone who's obeying God. Usually, and doing what God says for us to do and living the life that God has commanded us to live. I, I run into people all over the earth and all of my life. They'll tell you, with, with, if you put them on a, a, a lie detector test, they would pass it because they really believe it. That they are walking with God, that they are living the life that God has uh, commanded them to live. They've never done a sign, a wonder, or a miracle that has resulted in anybody getting saved, baptized, and planted in the church, but yet they believe that they're doing the will of God. What could be further from the truth? Because really, in the end of the analysis, that's the will of God. He comes, He redeems us. He, the will of God is that we give, in every dimension of our life, we give thanks we're living out this relationship with them that we're born at, now that we're a new creation, that we're born again. This is the door he's opened up for us. But the will of God for our life is expressed in an obedience to him. It's a proper response to his love. And reality of it is, is he's given to us his Holy Spirit. He's joined our heart, made our heart one with his heart. And what's going on in his heart? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God's desire to take care of people. Man, you start taking care of people, God's going to make you rich. You start taking poor people, care of poor people, God's going to give you wealth. You know why? He that gives to the poor is lending something to God. How'd you like to lend God some money? <laughs> How'd you like to lend God something? Huh? He was so self-interested, so concerned, so consumed with their own stuff. It's not righteousness. You can say that you can say how that you're walking in righteousness, but until you begin to live the life of Jesus and do what the Word of God says... You have no measure for righteousness. And I want to tell you that when we talk about righteousness and we're living in the ministry of righteousness, the time of empowerment to do righteousness, the, the place of position that we have with God right now by experience and by position. 
of being everything that he can give all that he has to. Then the kind of people that he can give everything that he has without restraint to. I want to let you look at a verse of scripture with me in Psalms 106. Hallelujah. 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 Everybody shout. Well, you know what? God, the Holy Ghost, you know, I said everybody shouting, you shouted, praise God. Thank you for your obedience and your willingness to cooperate. But you know, the Holy Ghost can do the same thing to you and produce something even more, even more profound and powerful in you. And I know some of you got to get past fear. Some of you got to get past intimidation. Some of you got to get past, you know, those th other things that belong to self-interest. All that stuff only can operate in the realm of self-interest because you give yourself continually to yourself. You've not learned how to deny yourself. You know, I was, I, I glanced over at Crystal and just glanced over at different people, Chrissy, and, you know, I just seeing, and, and, and Deborah, I just seeing people who's really learning how to go away in a public place. You just going to play her all meeting? You just going to let her? She doesn't act like that otherwise. Just don't let her. Shut her down. Don't make me stop and have to correct your child. Please, let me minister. Okay? Get your kids in, in, under control. Amen. Psalms chapter, chapter, Psalms chapter 106. 106. Psalms chapter 106, verse 3. Blessed are they that keep judgment and he that does righteousness sometimes. No. <laughs> did, I, did I have a problem reading that verse? Yes. Huh? Well, we can't, you know, this, cause, uh, this goes against everybody's doctrine. Not everybody's, but a lot of people's doctrine. Blessed is he that does righteousness all the time. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And Jesus Christ, he shows us, he personifies for us righteousness. He's the one who is our righteousness. He is righteousness. He is our righteousness. His life and his conduct is the means by which God the Holy Spirit is training us. And he's teaching us how to place every action and every step just like, just like Jesus showed us. In, place, in the place that Jesus showed us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you like order? Yes. I like order. When things are out of order, especially... My, my wife is extremist on order. Sometimes it's like, baby, you can leave at least one dish. I mean, everything has to be put in its proper place all the time. Every time. All the time. Anybody knows her? That's true. You know that's true. That is no exaggeration. But for me, I get totally... I get totally out of sorts when things are not when things are out of divine order yeah I'm just, I mean it's pretty easy going pretty accommodating things are out of order divine out of divine order I'm upset man it's a mess that's that's a that's a place where everything that is opposed to you and everything that Satan can possibly put on you ultimately is is, is in operation or potentially to be in operation I'm gonna make sure people get in divine order Jesus shows us divine order Hallelujah. 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 Come on, people. You go deep in the Holy Ghost here tonight. Thank you, Lord. If you just begin to respond instead of holding on to your life, just learn how to be a servant and say, yes, yes, Lord well, God, I want, to, I want to serve you. I want to obey you. I want to do things your way. Hallelujah. I want to learn how to walk in righteousness. Praise God. He gave you the gift of righteousness. Imagine God gives you the most glorious, amazing, wonderful gift, and you don't do nothing with it. Or you define it based upon your own terms, what suits you, what goes along with your thinking, and then that is your definition for righteousness. No, God's definition for righteousness has been clearly revealed in the Logos. Christ Jesus is the Word. Hallelujah. He's the definition. He's the definition. Hallelujah. And the written Word describes all those things. Hallelujah. 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 
Oh, what a glorious, what a glorious thing is going to begin to happen in the earth when God's people begin to do what God has told us to do, when we begin to, to live by the word and walk in the spirit. What an abundant life. Amen. Amen. I tell you, they, the, the, this language of the spirit, what we, so, what we call tongues, the language of the spirit is supposed to be able to produce within us a greater display of that outworking, a greater display of faith, a greater display of love. It's just a, the means by which we go there. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> but it seems like people in the past doing it a whole lot better. <laughs> Hallelujah. You need to do a little bit of that at home too. Hallelujah. Karabashikeli mia today. Kids need attention. Kids left unto themselves will bring their parents shame. And squawk and scream on the front row. That's correct. People, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to command my house. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to command my house. People sit around and say whatever they want to say about it. I'm going to command my house. You get your house in order. Amen. Amen. Come on, people. Amen. Come on, people. There's no reason for you and I to give room to the powers of darkness. There's no reason for you and I to give room to the powers of darkness. Hallelujah. Amen. Take the rod. The rod will drive out foolishness. Huh? I purpose to pray foolishness out of my kids' heart and lives. But if you don't know how to pray, get a rod and it'll drive foolishness out. They shall not die. Regard not their screaming and their crying and their fit pitching. They shall not die. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You'll save, and what does the scripture say? You'll save their soul. And guess what? You don't do it, and you won't save their soul. Huh? It's one thing to be in a house where God's, uh, where, where the rules and the, and the order and the, and, the, and the provision of God is given and not to do it. And to be in a house where the, no one knows about the rules and the provision and the order of God and not do it. Because you, 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 you've been given the things that Father has provided for us to have and you don't allow, you don't use them? Huh? Goodness gracious. Right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to backfire on you. God's not going to be mocked. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. It's a manifestation, man. It looks like a devil, doesn't it? It does. It looks just like a demon spirit. Can't really tell much difference from somebody throwing a fit, the devil. You know what I'm saying? Comes from the same place. Hello. And then you have to ask why. Where's that coming from? What's the root of that? What's going on with that? And then people can, they can go get their little counselors and get their little psychology books and look what the ungodly said and try to apply that. Or you can get down on your knees, you can begin to cry out to God and say, there's something wrong here. There's something not supposed to be in existence here. Huh? And get it straightened out. I almost feel like saying, you foul spirit of hell, come out. Yeah. Jesus. Go to 2 Corinthians with me, chapter 3. I'm really concerned. I'll tell you right now, there's not a lot of things that pull me away from the anointing. No. Don't give her her way. I mean, you know, if I've got to make the church service about training you guys how to raise your children, I will do it. Because it's too big of a price to me. I'm not going to, I'm not going to stand by and watch people do it wrong. Constantly breaking and violating the rules and saying they understand. 
This is what we deal with in the church from, this, from the pulpit, from the platform, all the way to the back row. People saying, yes, I understand. Yes, I get it, but not doing it. Violating things right and left in the spirit. I mean, come on, people, get some discipline in God. Get some place where you, where you begin to trust him. And it's pure, 100% trust in God. You're not backing up. You're not turning the right. You're not turning the left. You're going to go straight forward in God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I'm trying my best to get over here to a place. I mean, I can take control of the situation. I don't want to. I don't want to take control of it. And we'll just all start interceding for Naomi. She's got the service anyways. Start interceding for Joshua and Allie and their family because there's things they got to get straightened out. They don't really recognize it, but there's things they got to get straightened out. And I want to do that for every one of you. It's just not every one of you are sitting on the row with this, on front row with this kind of display of problems. <laughs> But when we have the problem, might as well not ignore it. What happens is a lot of times we just rush it, out to rush it out so that we can go up to a back room with it, feed them crackers and Kool-Aid, right? So it never has to be dealt with. So we can go on and have a little, a nice little neat package of a presentation and everybody feel warm and fuzzy about themselves. Now let's deal with the stuff, people here. Let's get, let's get, let's get raw and real with God. Let's let God let the floodlight of heaven shine in our hearts. Because until you get in the church and things are going to begin to be manifested. Why? Because the spirit of truth is here. We don't want, I don't want games. I'm not playing games. I don't want my own thing. I want his thing. And when you do, what's going on in people's lives starts to start being mean manifest. It's authority, people. It's authority. It's a walk with God that produces the authority. Hallelujah. It's a divine order in the house that produces authority. Because that's all part of it. Because you can say you walk with God, but if you don't have divine order in your house, listen to me. You don't have a walk with God. You can pretend all you want. You can smile at everybody and, and be sweet to everybody. You don't have divine order in your house. I don't care. That's not righteousness. Righteousness is divine order. It's doing what God says in his word to do. And it is ultimately personified in Jesus. Don't get it wrong. It can't be the righteousness which by the law. It can't look like a Pharisee. It can't look like a Sadducee. I'm going to try to get here to a point tonight where I can tell you everybody's response to this righteousness. And especially the response and examples that we see in the Bible. Bible to this righteousness because there's a whole there's a whole sort different uh, di, you know many many different dimensions of response to Christ Jesus you got the response of a woman and you think about the woman that comes in she's a sinner and most people believe that this woman was a prostitute and she, her response to Jesus was very, very different than Simon's response to Jesus and everybody else that was sitting around being critical and suspicious. And really, it's their response to righteousness. And you know, I personally believe that this woman was in the meetings where Jesus was at, and she saw the power of God being displayed. She saw the sick being healed, devils being driven out, divine order coming into place, because when the... When, his divine power comes and it is, and it, you know, there, there was times where Jesus took control of the entire situation. There was, there was places and in, in times and events where um, Jesus did not take control of the situation. He responded to where the people were at. He, were, he responded to, uh, for example, Nazareth. He responded to their doubt and unbelief. And there he only, he, and he didn't do many mighty works there, just healed a few sick folk. And their response to him was to kill him and to destroy him. But here is a woman seeing these miracles that he was doing. She's overwhelmed by, it. she was a spectator. I just see her as a spectator sitting in the, you know, standing in the very outer perimeter of the crowd, hearing the shouts of people seeing somebody leave who was blind or who was crippled. She's just overwhelmed by the power of God. Her response to him was that affection that you've seen, this, this 
overwhelming love of Jesus at the same time of this holiness and this conviction. I mean, at the same time, responding to his holiness, to his judgments, and to his love, all at the same time. Other people are standing there in the crowd, and how are they responding to righteousness? He's got a devil. How are they? Some are saying he's got a devil. He cast out these demons by Beelzebub. Other people are responding with, you know, cr criticisms. Other people are responding with maybe he is the Christ. There's all the extremes of what it looks like when somebody encounters Jesus, encounters the word. Reality of it is, when I encounter the word of God, I'm encountering Jesus. When I, and, and here we have the Holy Spirit who's come to reveal and display Jesus to us. <laughs> How are we responding to him? Is it a religious response? A little hallelujah, a little clap, a little dance around, a little, a little smile on our face to go home and do whatever it is that we normally do. Living out some kind of life that doesn't anywhere, look anywhere like that life in person that was revealed in the incarnate word. We're going to get after this thing tonight. Hallelujah. I'm believe for every manifestation to take place will take place. Jesus knew how to preach and get after it until every devil in the place was mad. With the body or without the body, where everybody in the place that could get mad was mad. Every demon spirit could, was outraged. Hallelujah. And then ultimately to bring to pass a change, a radical change. Hallelujah. I want you to confront Jesus tonight. I want you to confront his word tonight. I want you to confront his ministry tonight. I want you to confront the call of God upon your life. I want you to confront the will of God. God has willed to produce a bunch of Jesus people who are full of the Holy Ghost. A bunch of people whose heart are so set upon God and they're so dedicated to doing His will that they automatically, when they get together, there is no divisions among them because everybody's set on Father's will. You don't have to get on the same page with everybody else around you. When you are set to do Father's will and everybody around you is set to do Father's will, you don't have all the division. You don't have all the complaint. You don't have all the separation. You don't have all the suspicion. You don't have all the rebellion. You don't have the smiles, you know, the, you know, they, you know a smile that is a falsehood. A smile that just looks like it's agreeing, but reality, the heart rejects what's being said. That's the kiss of Judas. Do you understand that? It's the kiss of Judas. To smile and embrace as though that you love and accept, but your heart is to betray. We just don't want any of this. We want, we want the floodlight of heaven to shine upon our soul. If there's not Holy Ghost conviction in the house, if there's not divine order in the house, how's there ever going to be Holy Ghost conviction out there in the highways and the byways and the streets? How is, I mean, you could bring people in here, but what's going to happen if there is nobody flowing in the Holy Ghost? For too long, the many have sit around and watched one or two people flow in the Holy Ghost, and that is how they regulated the meeting. You understand? That's how they judge the meeting. If those one or two or three who know how to flow in the Holy Ghost were really flowing, the meeting was great. And they had completely eliminated their responsibility for the meeting, completely out of the judgment. They defined a meeting, good meeting, because the one or two or three people who know how to flow in the Holy Ghost were really on, or they were just not fully given over or whatever. And it was to, without any regard to their individual responsibility to supply something. Everybody's made it the pastor's responsibility. No, God's made it your yes. responsibility yes. as to whether or not somebody yes. comes in here. I was so blessed by April. Thank you so much. I watched you get up and go get that girl. Amen. Amen. That's what it's all about. You went and you got that woman and you took her by the hand and you brought her up here and Jesus met her. You brought her to Jesus. I'm telling you right now, you were just as so much a part of that. That's got to be going on in our life, people. 
It goes on in our life only because there's truth in the inward parts. We give ourselves to this all the time. It's not just some little, little switch we turn on because we're, you know, we're church Sunday or, you know, we got some little, you know, dichotomized life, you know, because we've separated out our business from uh, ministry and our whatever, you know. Our playtime, our recreation time, our... Come on, people. What part about being a new creation is not full time? What part of being born again and being made privileged to be made the family of God, to present ourselves as ministers of the Lord Jesus Christ, to be privileged to stand in his presence is less than full time? I hope Jesus don't come in your part-time off. <laughs> I'm amazed at how many people have excuses of why they don't come to all the meetings. I hope you make heaven. I hope you got that particular time when Jesus comes. You've not decided to be doing something else. Father tells us to be sober and to be vigilant. He doesn't waste his words. Was he just... Was he just Kidding, high five. And I said, be sober and be vigilant. You do not know the hour in which your Lord comes. For you, to hold you, to say, this day I require your life. This day I require your soul. A friend of mine just made 48 years old. Well, you know what? There's a lot of, he should be very, very glad. Those of you who are really old, you should be very, very glad because very few people have lived to get as old as you are. So many people have died. There's many people that never had the privilege of living to be 48 years old. There's, very, there's a lot of people who did not, you know, I, I misspoke. There's a lot of people who did not live long enough to, be, to enjoy 57, however old, old you are. You should be so thankful instead of sitting around going, my goodness, I'm so, you know, old or whatever. <laughs> Father has preserved you. He's the one who calls it. But you don't know what hour your Lord is coming for you. You're going to have to give response. You're going to need to be responsible for the life he's given you. He gave to every man according to his individual ability. He's like one who goes on. He is a, like a king, a ruler of a country who goes on a long journey and takes his possessions and he gives them to his servants. And when, and, and when we look at that, we're looking at the kingdom of God, what Christ Jesus gave to us was he gave to us and trusted to us the things of his ministry, the things of the kingdom of God, which all is all about being manifested to destroy the works of sin, to destroy the works of the devil, really, which is everything from oppressing and tormenting people's lives to those things that oppress and torment their spirit, their body, their soul, whatever the situation may be, blinding their hearts and minds from knowing this wonderful love and and this wonderful joy of fellowship in him that causes you to be just so overwhelmed with love. That you're willing, to go and, you're willing to go and lay down your life for a lost and dying world. You know, I, I want you, before we, before we talk too much more about this, I want you to look and see something so beautiful in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and I want you to believe it. And I want you to start living in it. I don't want you, you, need to, you need to stop running and hiding every time you hear the voice of God. Running and hiding in shame. As Adam did, who wanted to cover his transgression. God says you're not going to prosper if you do that. You're supposed to come stand in the light and let the light burn in you. Let the light examine you. People all the time, they throw up. They throw up a defense against God. And their defense against God is their own self-interest, their own opinions, their own self-preservation of their life. They throw up a defense. They throw up a wall. They will not hear. They recoil at the, re at the sound of his rebuke. As a child of God, that should not happen. As a child of God, we should not recoil at the sound of his rebuke. I corrected Naomi the other day. She ran crying, jumped up in my lap and hugged me. And I just gave her a simple rebuke. You will not do that ever again. That's all I said. You will not do that ever again. That's the way our response needs to be the father. She didn't throw a fit. 
She didn't act ugly. She ran. She jumped up in my arms. She, be, she began, she didn't cry. She was sobbing. Sorry, Papa, sorry, sorry, Papa. Well, that's the way our heart's supposed to be at his rebuke. And they're supposed to be defiant and rebellious. <laughs> and we're supposed to have people around us that are going to correct us and not let us get away with stuff. Because the child left unto himself will bring the father a great reproach. And you and I are children. The father hasn't left us in the hands of people who are our peers that we think that we know more or just as much as they do. Uh, Father has left us in the hands of the Holy Ghost and has given special anointings and special giftings to be able to declare His Word. And as long as you think that they're your peers and you have a right and it's just a tit for tat, I'm going to tell you right now, you're not under authority and you're never going to move out with God and you're not in divine order and your door's wide open to everything that Satan can do to run right over top of you. And you can use all the arm of flesh to try to bring things into some kind of order that you want. Nothing's going to change because anything that belongs to God is a mirac miraculous working of His power in the midst of our life and we say yes to him so that he can come in and work that miraculous power. Yes. Listen, I'm not only interested in seeing people, God's not only interested in seeing people develop in the giftings of the Spirit, he's interested in seeing people established in the Word of God, to be established in righteousness. Because reality of it is, I don't really believe that you truly develop in the giftings of the Spirit unless the foundation is right, unless it's pure, unless it's holy. Because I know what Peter said. He said, you give all attendance to making your calling and election sure. You give yourself to minding these things, to developing these things, having them grow and mature in your life, and then a door shall be opened unto you, an entrance shall be ministered to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of the dear son. We under, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, forgive me. We, we see the model set before us of consecration to the Father, consecration to his will. If there's anything that I want people to grab a hold of is that you must find yourself doing the will of the Father. Amen. And if you're not doing the will of the Father, he's going to say, I have no fellowship with you. Because you can make sin to be whatever you want it to be, transgression to be whatever you want it to be, your ideas of righteousness, whatever you want it to be. But the bottom line of it is the will of the Father was fully revealed in Christ Jesus. And God has commanded each and every one of us to imitate Christ Jesus and even to imitate him. Amen. And when I say that in that respect, of course, I'm saying Father and the Holy Ghost. Because I'm not in any way saying that Jesus isn't God because he's God. And there needs to be more confession of that. Huh? You know, there's a lot of Christians running around talking about Christ. Well, the Hindus use that word all the time. This Christ, that Christ, the Christ, the Christ, the Christ. They use the Lord all the time. The Lord, 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 Lord Christ. Now it's become a part of a Christian vocabulary. No, we're talking about a name, Jesus. Who is the Messiah. Hallelujah. And he's just not a Christ. Hallelujah. And, and, and besides that, and more than that, he is God. Hallelujah. And he is our God. Hallelujah. And we're not serving any other God. Hallelujah. And he's defined for us what that service looks like and how that service is supposed to be wrought, worked out in our life by a dependency upon the Holy Ghost. If I'm not teaching you how to flow in the Holy Ghost, if I look around and I see people, they're just flowing in their own self and you won't receive a rebuke, and you get this little hurt look in your eyes because I come to you and I say, you're, what you're doing is wrong. And all it is is hurt look. You know what that is? That self-defense rising up with an offended spirit. You need to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Because I'm going to tell you right now, Jesus is going to come down and be your pastor. He sent me. Thank you, Lord. He sent me. And there's times that, you know, there's, there's a big celebration. Right now, I'm Elizabeth's pastor. I'm not her dad. That's right. That's right. I'm going to talk to her as a pastor. Right. And when we get home, whatever, offline, well, you know, she can come and tell her dad how the pastor was a little rough with her. <laughs> and we can discuss it. But when you are stirred with a righteous cause to have things in your life in that, in that, 
that which God has commanded, which he demands. God demands it. Somehow we don't understand that God demands something here. <laughs> that the reality of it is, is our unwilling to obey, the consequence of it is going to be people that will spend eternity in hell because it was only through our obedience that they were ever going to be reached. It was only because I, we were willing to walk in the Holy Ghost that they were able to see, they were going to see a light in His presence. I know so many people who've given their life to Jesus Christ because they came into the meeting and they were captivated by somebody flowing in the anointing. Yeah. They didn't know what it was. They just said, well, I want that. Yeah. I've known so many people who've given their life to Jesus because they were overwhelmed by the love of God that was being expressed to them through people around them. Even when they looked terrible, their, their, their skirt was way too short. Their, their, their makeup was way too thick. <laughs> their shirt was way too revealing. But there's people around just loving on them and they, gave, they, they didn't respond to the message. They responded to love. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. There's so many people that will die and go to hell because you're not willing to do it God's way. You're so set on doing it your own way. And tonight I pray that you'll be confronted yeah. in yeah. Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. And that you begin to define righteousness on the basis of who Jesus Christ is. Yes. That you begin to understand that God has purposed for us to walk in his judgments. He's purposed for us to walk in his decrees, yes. Yes. his statutes. Every time the prophets were talking about this new birth experience, this born again experience, this new creation experience, this deliverance that would come when God would come and intervene on our behalf, which he did in Christ Jesus. They always talked about at that juncture in time, we would always, he would cause us. And literally with an impact, it's a causative, the hip feel in the Hebrew language, but the impact of it is to make us walk in his judgments, in his statutes, in his decrees, in his precepts, in his rulings, in his decisions. And that's the impact of the Holy Ghost. That's the impact of the Holy Ghost. But we have to will it. That is the impact of the Holy Ghost, but we have to will it. And when we will it, He will make us to do it. He will make us to do it. He will cause us to do it. He will be the power of doing it. He will be the force by which we get it done. We won't have to be convinced with intellectual arguments. We won't have to be taught of men how to abide in this realm, how to live and dwell in this realm. Too many people are still walking in the counsel of the ungodly. They got about 50% counsel of ungodly. Let me just use this as a proportionality. They got 50% counsel of the ungodly and 50% counsel of God. And they're saying that they're walking in all the counsel of God. Oh, but let it be sorted out. Yes. How is he sorted out? Deeds, conduct, behavior, disposition, yieldedness, growth, maturity. All of those things speak of fruit. That's how he sorts it out. Where's our affection really at? Where's our, our desire, our heart's passion really at? If we're risen with Christ Jesus, our affections are supposed to be in a realm called heaven, a place where Jesus is right now. That our desires, the things that we really want, what we really want to be developed in, what we really want to possess, what we really want to have, is those things that only the Holy Ghost can bring and develop within our lives through the ministry of Jesus in our life. Nothing else matters. We hate everything else. We hate it. Even our own life in this world. We hate it. We despise it. True. That's heaven's reality flooding our soul. That's heaven's reality flooding our soul. Hello. Yeah. That's heaven's reality flooding our soul. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Heaven's reality flooding our soul. <laughs> I'm hungry for that. Yeah. I'm hungry for heaven's reality flooding my soul. I've drank enough of this to taste and see. I want, I'm desperate for more. Every bite of his glory that I take and consume and eat I've got an appetite that gets bigger. I mean, there's some food that you sit down and eat and it's a discipline to stop eating it. Huh? There's only a couple of people that cook like that. My wife is one of them and there's certain things that she cooks that it's like, I could eat this all day until I'm sick. 
I could try to do a thing like the Greeks did, eat and then go throw up and come back and eat more. This is so good. I don't do that. <laughs> There's other things that you eat and it's like, okay, you're just kind of like choking it down. You need lots of water and lots of ketchup, right? right? Yes. <laughs> and you're like, well, I'm glad that's over now. We needed to do that, but it's done. Praise God. Man, you come and you sit at his table. You come begin to eat of the good things of God. This is the kind of food that you don't want to stop eating. This is the kind, this is a table that is set. He's, he's, he's going to continually, con, continually bring to us more as our spirit, as our soul craves it. And he's going to be evaluating because he's, he's going to stop and look at you. As soon as all of a sudden your affections are turned to something else, he's going to stop and look at you. I'm going to tell you this. When I begin to doze off, go to sleep, when I'm there, either just falling asleep or just light sleep, I can see the angels. I feel the angels all around me. Sometimes I actually see them pass by. I see the presence of the Lord. I know that there is a great company around you, around us, all the time. That when God sees somebody who was willing to do His will, willing to walk in His life, He mobilizes all heaven to our defense. He does not in any way limit any of the provision and the resources. I mean, I, this is pretty funny, but I was sleeping just, yeah, well, I think it was yesterday, the day before yesterday, I was laying back on the couch and been studying. I was there in that place. I saw one of the angels of the Lord pass by me. I thought it was Ann. <laughs> They passed by real quick. I could feel them. I said, Ann. I woke up and said, Ann, you here? I sat there in the house hollering for a few minutes and realized, no, it wasn't her. <laughs> Laid back down. Sitting back down. I couldn't sit back down anyways. But. And then it goes beyond all that. You get all, get all excited about angels. What? You got God in you, man. Yeah. Don't act too pious to me right now. Don't act too <laughs> all excited about it all. Don't. Come on. Because some of you just be more freaked out and more excited about seeing an angel than coming to the revelation that God's walking around on the side of you. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I want you to come to a revelation. God wants us to come to a revelation. He's walking around on the side of us. Who? That he's tabernacle on the inside of us. Hallelujah. I get real excited right now and start jumping over the chairs. Hallelujah. <laughs> When if you, if you'll let God show you how quick joy unspeakable, how, how close joy unspeakable is to you all the time and how quickly it can come by your, by the adjustment of your attitude and submission to righteousness and submission to the Holy Ghost, because you're willing to walk with God for real based upon fruit, not based upon your own ideas of religious thinking and philosophies and traditions. I've talked to people this a long time, a long time, a long time. It just, you can't pry anybody who thinks that they've already got it. They already know it. They've already got it sorted out. You're hopeless, man. Something that's got, Christ has got to hit you in your life. Well, you hit the dirt going, oh my God. I'm tired of living in this deception. I'm tired of living under the influence of these mind-blinding spirits. That's why I really believe, you know, I've looked at this thing so many different ways. And thought about, well, wh how much responsibility do we put on people in the kingdom of God? I don't want to put any more responsibility on people than what God's putting on them. But I look at the scripture and I see the responsibility of the very life of Jesus that God puts upon all of his people, not some of his people. And it's a responsibility that is a wonderful responsibility. And then I see by my firsthand experience that I get to encounter so many of these things. I have had to come to terms with my own ignorance and my own blindness. Because I threw myself into the ministry and had to deal with my lack of authority and power in my life. Huh? Yeah. 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 I, you know, when we were, when we were in, um, when we were in Nepal, for example, the first time. When, well, you know, I had done a couple of crusades before that, but this one was really huge to me. I'm going to tell you right now. I wasn't overwhelmed and captivated by all the people 
and all, that got healed and all the signs and wonders and miracles that took place, even though they, I was captivated by them. I was also overwhelmed by all the people who didn't get healed. People, and praise God, the Lord caused most people to just kept be fixated on all the miracles and signs and wonders and things that happened. Like I, we, Anna and I tell the story about just being captivated by the, the, the one girl that was delivered from those demons and the crazy manifestation that took place in that deliverance. And there where we're watching her and seeing her, we get an open vision from heaven. But I wasn't really captivated by all that. I was captivated by all the people who didn't get healed and didn't get a miracle and all the people that went home not knowing Jesus. And let me tell you what that causes you to do. It causes you to throw yourself upon the rock and be broken. That's what it causes. And a lot of people just never been there because they didn't throw themselves into the work of the ministry. And I had already done that in many respects and many times up until the point with just on a bigger scale. I don't find myself being more comforted by my growth and maturity. I find myself more desperate to be everything that he is and be all that he's commanded. Because when you understand it's all that he's commanded, suddenly you recognize, wait a minute, he's not coming up short. I got a problem yielding. It changed the whole dynamics thing. You quit blaming God psychologically, even though you're not willing to admit it. And you recognize, no, you blockading God. And you start saying, when you start coming to reality on this thing, you go, Father, I don't want to run a blockade against you anymore. No I don't want to resist your will. I don't want to do my own way anymore. I want to be conformed to your word. I want to be conformed to your word. I want to be conformed to your image. I want to be conformed to your son. It's not anymore just a cry of the heart that sounds real, but it's just become a song that's sung. Reveal your son in me. People, when I wrote that song so many years ago, it was a cry of my heart by the Holy Ghost but it's become the passion and desperation of my very existence. Reveal your son in me. There's nothing about me personally as, as a human being that I'm fascinated with. I can honestly say that I hate my life in this world because I've seen my life in Jesus. When I think about the impact of Jesus anointing of Jesus' signs and wonders and miracles upon that woman who was a sinner. I've got to have the same thing going on in me. I've got to come to know the same kind of compassion. When I think about Jesus stopping the funeral parade at Nain and seeing the desperate mama who's crying and grieving over the death of her only son, and he says to the young boy, young man, arise and life comes into the body. I've got to be that Jesus. I've got to have that ministry. That's the will of the Father. That's what he wants in my life. Amen. When I see the multitudes that are broken and distraught and are like sheep that are scattered having no shepherd, if you know anything about sheep, they have got to be really afraid and messed up to be scattered because they want to be collected together. They're a flock. And the only way that they're going to scatter is because they have been chased by wolves to exhaustion. They are, they are so exhausted that their natural, normal instincts can't function anymore. So you can say that they're, they've gone crazy. They've gone nuts. They're scattered. I want to be able to have that same kind of view of humanity that Jesus expressed to us and then the same kind of signs and wonders, miracle provision, the same kind of flow of heaven to see every one of them healed, set free, delivered, heaven come and drive out hell. When I read about Jesus coming and preaching and teaching and they heard and were healed and then in the very hearing of it, and the flow of the anointing and the virtue that went out of them. Those who were vexed with unclean spirits were delivered at that moment in time, not by anybody raising their voice and casting out devils. Not to say that sometimes we don't raise our voice and cast out devils because Jesus did, but just the very power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. This is righteousness. Any other kinds of righteousness and ideas of righteousness? The false righteousness. It's a self-righteousness. Jesus came and personified it for us. 
I want you to look with me quickly here in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know that people may be watching on the web right now. Maybe there's people even sitting in this place. You don't understand what's going on. The things that we're saying makes absolutely no sense whatsoever to you. I want you to understand, God wants to change your perception of life. You may think that, you know, you may call a lot of things normal and everyday and common and wonder why we're so upset about it and excited about it. Because we don't call what you call normal, normal. We call it demonic. We call it a place of the world that which will die and perish forever. You don't understand what we understand. You don't understand what the Word of God has declared and reveals to us as He warns us right now to flee from the wrath to come. Father is here in His mercy and His love with the blood that washes us and cleanses us, with the Holy Ghost that ha, renews us, strengthens us, and empowers us. And, all, and, and whew, you, talk about, you talk about a great reward to always constantly be in this place of floods of joy, to be in this place of peace that passes understanding, to be in this place of divine glory, to be in this place of fellowship. Hey, when I go to sleep, I fall asleep quite right away. Unless the anointing is so overwhelming me, I'm listening to the angels sing, I can't go to sleep because I'm being disturbed by the voices. I wouldn't trade what I have for anything. I wouldn't trade this place of pursuing God where the invisible is becoming more visible to me and that which is visible more profane to me. Do you hear me? Yes. That which already exists in the visible, that which men run after, that which men are captivated by is more profane to me every day. And the invisible is more visible, more real, and more desirous to me. And the more you hunger after these things, the more you seek these things, the more, the vi the more visible the invisible becomes. The more endearing these things that, that, that the Lord has done for us becomes, the more you're able to see and understand this wonderful life that He's given. Oh, I, I've got to be able, I've got to be able, I've got to lay hold of a divine power that Jesus expressed that will break off every yoke, an anointing that will break off every yoke of sickness, every yoke of blindness, every yoke of disease, every yoke that Satan would put upon people so that everybody can begin to see this wonderful life that God has given to us. Listen, this religion, this power of mind-blinding spirits that are in religion. I want enough anointing to shut that thing down in this house. Yeah. as well as every house. Amen. I'm going to be able to move and flow in a, an anointing that was expressed in so many people's lives. Charles Finney being an example of it, that when he walked into a place when he was many times interacting with people, the power of God was so overwhelmed them that they become incapacitated in many different expressions of that. I want that. Happened with Wigglesworth's life as well. Huh? Yeah. You got to get past your temptations first. Yeah. Some people, as soon as they walk into a room, they're overcome by the lust spirits in somebody's life or the hate spirits in somebody's life or the strife spirits in somebody's life. They don't even know what's going on. They don't even understand. They're overwhelmed by the, spirit, the, the spiritual darkness that is in an other person's life. Uh, God, it caused you to walk in a relationship with them that you walk in to any place. You change the atmosphere because your atmosphere is living under the realms of heaven, under the glory ha, of the reign of Jesus Christ, the rule of the Holy Ghost. Living in the rule of the Holy Ghost is like living in the holies of holies. But we're never going to know it. If we're so preoccupied with earthly interests, we'll never know it. All you'll ever know about God is where your hunger and your passion and your desperation has taken you. There's been many people who say that most of that hunger and passion and desperation was more fully expressed in people's lives in the first year of their, of their 
salvation and then it began to wane. And so all they have is they express, maybe even after 40, 50, 60 years, all they're expressing is what they had and got and received in the first year. To sit, they lived on it the rest of their life. What a tragedy, eh? Yes. Father wants to shift this thing around for you. Amen. God, the Holy Ghost wants to invade your life and begin to produce within your life Amen. a desperation and hunger. Amen. And it's a good thing. It's a good thing because when we cry out to God, He just comes. You know, I, I just, I, I can just give you an example in, in my living room the other day. I just, in my living room, and I'd been studying all day and, you know, and just, I spent my day in the things of, of, of the Lord. It wasn't like I was preoccupied with something. I just spent my day in the things of the Lord. I turned on the TV, watched some news, and I have a news channel. I don't have the normal TV, a news channel. Then I flipped over to the YouTubes there. I was looking at the list of the YouTubes. There's a number of different Western movies on, old movies. And I saw a YouTube of a, of a preacher there. And you know, you don't know it, but Father's standing there going, what are you going to decide? You don't know it. We don't have a conscious of it. Even as, crow, as mature as we get, because we can just, just, we just, because it's okay. It's okay. So we've got a new problem. Me clicking on, you know, watching some, you know, the big country. Gregory Peck. Huh? Well, no, probably no problem with that. You know, no problem with that. There's no lasciviousness in that. There's no foul things in that. He's got a problem when you're watching stuff. has got foul stuff in it. You think you're all big enough to handle it, but you're not. It's going to come in you. It's going to pollute you. You touch the unclean thing, you're going to stink. You get sprayed by a skunk, you're going to stink. It's just, that's, it's just, that's just the way it is. You may not smell good. I hit the preacher. As soon as I hear the preacher, a flood of heaven overwhelmed me. I had a flood of heaven overwhelmed me. It wasn't anything about the preacher. The preacher, I didn't come on. Just flood of heaven. His father saying, thank you. Good choice. Here, just let me bless you. <laughs> just wanted to stay, keep your heart right over here. Keep your meditations right over here. Huh? There's nothing really, there's nothing wrong with it. It just ain't going to take me anywhere in development. You're not going to, I'm going to sit there and watch the big country and develop in the things of the Spirit. <laughs> huh? I might, I might fantasize about having more cows. <laughs> what it was like to live in a horse culture. You know, what it was like to live in those days and things were much more simple. But ain't going to do anything about developing me in the Spirit. I know how the Lord loves it when we choose to be developed in the things of the Spirit. Because He's looking for some people that He can in, enlarge that he can give an understanding to, that he can begin to develop within them a skill to flow and function in the realms of signs and wonders and miracles, the realms of heaven, the realms of presenting what God is doing to humanity. If you don't get in the throes of ministry, you're never going to have that tension because all you're going to be thinking about is whether or not you're going to get a raise, how much money you've got in your 401k now, whether or not your annuity investment is doing good this month. It'll consume you. It'll consume you. It'll consume you. Don't you tell me it won't consume you. It'll consume you. It'll consume you. Where your, where your treasure is, that's where your heart's going to be. Where your interests are, that's where your heart's going to be. Mm -mm -mm. And like I said, God's not looking for you to go quit your job because all you're going to be is the same person you are right now, but without a job. God's looking for you to let him invade your life. So are you willing to spend time with the Holy Ghost? I mean, you know, the Holy Ghost, he's amazing. He could covet and demand that we give him every waking hour if we want anything from him. If I was the Holy Ghost, that's the way I'd do it. You want, well, you want my glory? You want the things I got for every waking hour? I'm not wasting my time on somebody just going to basically play games kind of thing. You're right. Everybody's glad I'm not God. 
<laughs> and so I'm letting all those behaviors be conformed to him and I'm, I'm learning how to act like him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am. I truly am. Praise the Lord for his mercy. But the Lord, he'll do a lot with you if you just give him 30 minutes. The Lord do, do even more with you if you give him an hour. It won't take long. You start giving him 30 minutes every day. You won't find out you're getting some fine dining. <laughs> you won't find out you got yourself. This is good. <laughs> it's good. Now, if you do some kind of religious exercise, I'll tell you right now, it's like pouring hot tire down your nostrils. You know, yeah, no, it's never going to, it's never going to develop beyond 30 minutes or whatever, because it's just too painful. Oh, my goodness gracious. But if it's real, if it's touching the heaven, if it's, <laughs> if it's something that belongs to what God, the Holy Ghost is supplying, it's good. It is good. And you're going to want to spend a little bit more time. I know i got to go. I know my schedule is calling me, but it's just, it's too, just too good. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you begin to understand, you know, when, when Anna had this, this la the last situation with her heart, and you know, I told Joshua and I, just give me 24 hours, give me 24 more hours, just let me pray, give me 24 more hours. And then let them do an echocardiogram, and if it's still, that's still the situation, then proceed. I mean, I knew it was going to be fine either way, I knew, but I mean, they had already been through so much and whatnot, and some procedures, so like, you know. I believe God, the scar will go away and she won't remember a thing if that's what it comes to. But, you know, 24 hours passed, the situation is still the same. God done so many wonderful miracles in the little baby's life. I mean, you know, you heard the doctors in the first, you know, first couple of weeks, she'd never see, if she lived, she wouldn't see, hear, or do anything else. She wouldn't think right, be right, walk right. I mean, you know, she was paralyzed of everything, you know, everything possible thing you could imagine. I guess they figure that they got to try to prepare you for the worst. Whatever. But nonetheless, this, this is the bad news club that everybody trusts in. <laughs> yes, yeah, it is. Bad news club. Everybody's putting their trust in a bad news club. <laughs> Tell it worse than it is and believe the whole thing. Come on, help us, Jesus. Help us, Lord Jesus. And, I was, and we were on our way to organize. It was the next morning after it was, took place, we were on our way to organize. I said, Lord. Why was I not able to see that miracle take place through my prayer and conversation and relationship with you? And the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, you need to pray in the Spirit more. I tell you, I heard him. I heard him so loud that I immediately crawled in the back of the, of the suburban and I went to praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you right now, people, God is looking for, it isn't that he's coming up short or that he's slack concerning his promises or somehow he's only measuring out just a little bit to the majority and giving a whole lot to the few. Yeah. It's just that we have to understand we've got to give ourselves to the spiritual things. We've got to give ourselves to these things that God has provided for us so that through him he can develop us to be who we were really created to be. We've given our whole life to be developed, to have skill sets within the realms of that which is going to make us some money and get us ahead and get us some friends and get us whatever, give us some talent to do some things maybe. And none of that, none of that fits in the kingdom. i tell you what doing righteousness is. It's walking in the Holy Ghost. It's living by the Holy Ghost. It's giving yourself over to be trained by Him, to be taught by Him. Because if I really got people and I, and I interviewed them, I said, you tell me, I want you to tell me exactly how it is, what you're doing right now that allows you to be taught by the Holy Ghost. Where He Himself is coming and teaching you and developing you. And don't you tell me it's your time in the Word, because I'm not talking about that. Yes, is he connected with that? Yes. But he wants to develop you in your sight, your seeing, your hearing, your understanding, your ability to discern, your ability to move with him, your ability to receive from him, your ability in every 
dimension of the divine. What are you doing right now? Most of you in this place could at least say that you're praying in the Holy Ghost. And that would be a right answer. That would be one good answer. But, you know, that's supposed to be developed a little bit more. That's supposed to go somewhere that is continually growing and maturing and excelling and producing something in terms of the outworking of faith, the outworking of a greater display of His love in our lives. For, for, and when you see people and they say they're giving themselves to the gifts of the Spirit, to the flowing in, that wonderful utterance, heavenly divine utterance that we call tongues, and yet there is no out, there's really no real increase in the outworking of faith in their life. And I'm talking about mountain moving faith. I'm not just talking about relationship faith. I'm talking about exploit faith. And there's no real development of compassion and love. That, I mean, if you, look at a, if you look at their behavior, if you took a movie of their behavior 20 years ago, not their outward appearance, their behavior, their behavior 20 years later is really almost superimposable. And we talk like this because we want to be able to help you understand something. Why don't you be able to help you understand your need? Why don't you be able to understand how to, to begin to lay hold on the provision that God has given you? I know it seems like nothing's happening when you're standing there praying to somebody and talking to someone that's not present. And maybe if you said, if you're really here, open the door, and the door never opened because you need the wrong kind of proofs that he's listening and that he's responding. He's responding all the time. Somebody said to me, I was in a meeting the other day. Somebody said, my goodness, the anointing, the power of God was on you. Because on you here tonight. Because what happened is there was ministers in, in, the, in the meeting. There was a couple of preachers in the meeting. And as soon as I went to pray for people, they fell out. I mean, they got knocked out. They fell off of their chair, knocked out and flat, prostrate on the floor. One was a Presbyterian preacher of all things, completely KO'd. Eyes rolled up in his head, boom, completely KO'd, knocked out. I said, no. I said, the reality of it is, is the manifest presence of God is always around. It's always here. Sometimes he does allow, just opens up the door and allows people to, even though they've not been willing to develop themselves, just opens the door and allows them to begin to participate with what's going on. Reality is, most people are, do not have the spiritual sense developed enough to recognize the great exploits of the presence and power of God that is continually all around us. Amen. You've not developed that sense. True. And I can't even think anything in, I can't even think of anything in the natural to compare it to because it's so it goes so beyond the natural senses, the spiritual sense that God would develop within our lives because we're willing to talk as it were into the air to someone who's not present. And suddenly something begin, a connection begins to happen and we can begin we begin to have an understanding, wait a minute, I'm being heard. Suddenly, something begins to happen, and there's this unction going on the inside of us. There's this, there's this, there's this explosion going on inside of us. There's this, there's this passion. There's this emotion going on inside. Where is this coming from? Who you just get? You're starting to get developed. Now the Holy Ghost has been able to pray through you, make intercession through you. God's able to have begin to have a roadway, a course way in your life. And then, and then that goes beyond that. <laughs> People say, well, I've never had a dream, and never vision, had a vision. You've not fasted much either. You've not dedicated yourself too much to getting caught away in the things of the Spirit, in prayer and intercession, touching heaven before you go to bed. It's just been, I lay me down to... Sleep prayer. 
Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take prayer. And it has no emotion in it. It has no divine emotion in it. It doesn't even really have a human emotion. Not really even a much human excitement in it. But divine excitement is something God develops us to be, with the ability to function in. And it is far more exciting than human excitement. And you know, suddenly you begin to tap that, touch into that realm. That's why, you, that's why we're telling you to read your Bible. Because it's spirit and life. If you're reading it right. That's why we're telling you to go to prayer. That's, where we, that's, why, that's why God opened up the door for you to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. So the Dinamorosaganina would be able to come through forth or through you. And then you're just going to lay it aside and every once in a while when you get around to it. And then, you know, worse than that, even worse than that, people, I see people do it. I watch you do it in this place. And you got to stop doing it. You just pray long enough to have an expression. That's not what it's about. You pray till all of a sudden the atmosphere changes. If you, if you begin to pray in the Holy Ghost and the atmosphere doesn't, if you don't feel lightning striking, Heaven's lightning striking your soul. Just stay with it. You will. The sound of it will change. The feel of it will change. The dimension of your emotions, your attitudes will change. Oh, hallelujah. 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 If I was to stop right now and I was to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost, just have all of you just be quiet. Just sit there and listen. The atmosphere begin to change. It might take a little while, 10, 15 minutes for some of you. Some of you, it's already starting to happen just because I was suggesting it. <laughs> Hallelujah. You start getting a little sensitive to God. There'd be stragglers. We'd have to continue on for 30 minutes. Some, I'd pray those of you who begin to respond to that atmosphere change that comes by that way of that supernatural gift that we've just tried to make it something far, far less than what it really is. The utterance of God, the Holy Ghost, teaching our spirit how to move with him and our mouth how to speak his utterances. Oh. That's righteousness. That's the judgments of God. God, held, Father, held out his best for last. Jesus said, I'm going to go get the promise of the Father. I'm going to go win gifts for you and pour them out upon men. I'm going to give you something so sacred, you better be careful because if you mess with it wrong, you will never be forgiven. Not in this world, nor in the world to come. There, see, there is still one place that you don't. Father doesn't have much, Father doesn't have grace for it. You don't mess with the sacred. You don't blaspheme the sacred. And I'm telling you right now, it, it, he is so sacred that he's easily grieved. And you can't live a life constantly grieving the Holy Ghost and expect that you're going to develop in him. You can't constantly grieve and quench the spirit and expect that somehow you're going to mature in hearing him and moving with him. Both Claudio Freidzon and Benny Hinn both wrote a book on Good Morning Holy Spirit. How to Wake Up with the Holy Ghost. How to Live Your Life in the Holy Ghost. Great books. They were trying to express something that they discovered in God. I'm going to tell you right now, when you get hungry for God, you're going to start going and learning from every person and every example in the Bible and every person and every example outside of the Bible who took a hold of the things that the Bible describes. And you're going to make a study of it and it's going to become more important to you than any other study that you've ever done. And you're not going to just have knowledge only to be able to give some kind of history lesson on what everybody did and how they did it. <laughs> but there's going to be a fruit of it in your life. If you get hungry for God, you're going to turn on the right channel. You get hungry for God, you're going to open up the Bible. You get hungry for God, you're going to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. You're going to begin to lift up your voice and say, God, I can't live. I don't want to live a normal life when you've given me a super normal one. 
I don't want to live a natural life when you give me a supernatural life. I don't want to live a human life when you've given me the Jesus kind of life. I don't want to walk in my spirit when you've given me your spirit. I don't want to have my mind and my thoughts and my understanding when I've been privileged to have your mind, your thoughts, and your understanding. I want to be endued with you, Lord, and with this privilege that I've been given by you, I demand of myself that which you commanded me to do and commanded me to be. Here in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, we discover some amazing things in this epistle of who God's people are and what we're supposed to look like. And if nothing else, you've got to understand your responsibility, people. You're manifestly declared to be the epistles of God, written, the epistles of Christ. You've manifestly declared to be, you are manifested. It is revealed, it is something that's visible to see that you are the epistles of Christ. That is pretty radical. Listen to me. You're the expression of those things that he, that he spoke of. You're the expression of those things which he wrote. This is how we're just getting started over here. We haven't grown up yet. We're just, this is just starting for starters. Hallelujah. To recognize that when you go shopping, you, you have a responsibility upon your shoulders. But I, unfortunately, I can't even get people to carry this responsibility into the church. That you have a responsibility to be full of joy, yeah. Yeah. to be full of praise, to be full of thanksgiving when you show up to the meeting. Yeah. If I brought the guy over that was giving everybody words of prophecy that saw two demons sitting on one girl's shoulder, I wonder what he would say about some of you. As each one was coming through the door, I told Catherine when I came in, I said, are you giving people words of knowledge and prophesying over them just like I described? She said, no. I said, well, get with it. <laughs> I guarantee if you had somebody stationed at the door with a word of knowledge, you'd be, good, you'd be getting yourself all cleaned up. You wouldn't just be getting yourself all fixed up, you know, looking good. You'd be getting yourself all fixed up in the spirit because you're getting ready to get examined. Yes. I mean, nobody's saying you've got two demons sitting on your shoulders. Yes. And you didn't have to tell them you're on the worship team. <laughs> huh? Or you were planning on preaching later on the week. <laughs> Are you a Sunday school teacher? You can't talk to me like that. I'm the Sunday school teacher. Well, it's still true. <laughs> You're taking more responsibility for yourself yeah, yeah. to be the epistles of Christ. Yeah. That is righteousness. Yeah. Being those people who represent the living God. We are the testimony of what salvation results in, of what it looks like to be transformed by the power of God. And we want to walk around doing our stuff. It smells. And not good. I was going to go into more detail on that, but I'm going to let it go. And because you think about, you think about this, the terms on the, the level on which, which Paul places it by the Holy Ghost because he describes us being the epistles of God, epistles of Christ, the ministers of Christ, forgive me, the epistles of Christ. He describes it just like it is so divine, it is so God, it is so what he's written, that he describes it as the finger of God that wrote out on the tablets of stone his will for all of Israel to see. And that he's written out with the, not the finger of God only, but by the power of the Holy Ghost. Look at that verse of scripture. Look at it. I believe it's verse 3. Yeah, it's right there. Not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God. Not on tables of stone, but fleshly tables of heart. He's calling us back to when the Lord wrote the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, with his own finger on stone. This is the supernatural handwriting of God in our life that is supposed to be visible for all men to see. And we want to do, what, what is it that we wanted to do? What was it we were upset about? That's unrighteousness. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to carry responsibility to recognize, you know, if you're upset, if you're not flowing in the Holy Ghost, if you don't have a, that anointing ready, just ready to lead somebody to Jesus, ready to cast out devils, ready to lay hands on the sick, yeah. ready to model love and goodness, that you can't leave your house till you get right, yeah. till you get yielded, yeah. till you get submitted. 
because you got you you are called by God to go and shine with the light that he himself expresses the light of the world to show forth his life to show forth his power to show forth his ministry <laughs> somehow there's got to be a shift this is righteousness this is righteousness these are the deeds of the Holy Ghost. This is a right attitude and a right heart and a right response to God. And when Father sees a right heart and a right attitude and a right response to the Father, He's going to come and meet you and He's going to fill you. And you're not going to be sitting around 10, 15 years trying to grow up in God. You don't have yourself a Pentecost that all of a sudden releases you to, to the nations. You don't have yourself a Pentecost that all of a sudden begins to make you fruitful. Praise God. Amen. You show me somebody, bring somebody to church and they give their life to the Lord and they bring their children. I'm going to tell you, I'll show you somebody who's been crying out to God. Father, break me, use me, make me. Because that's what, it's a product. It is not a product of some natural thing. It's a product of a supernatural thing that I've watched Baptists take a hold of. That I've watched Episcopalians take a hold of. I've watched Lutherans take a hold of it. I've watched Presbyterians take a hold of it. It's something that you determine that you are going to be a part of. It is a realm of faith to reach the lost. Amen. Mm -mm -mm. And you don't even have to be baptized in the Holy Ghost to have that realm of faith. Amen. It's true. Yes. It's just that when you baptize in the realm of the Holy Ghost, it goes to a whole nother level Amen. of exploits yes. because that's the baptism of the Holy Ghost is really all about. It's a supernatural power to change people's lives, to turn them from Satan to God, to turn them from darkness to light. It's a supernatural equipment and power. And when we get hungry about it, when we get real about it, when we get thirsty about it, when we get sincere about it, it begins to work in our lives. And then Father says, I need you in a couple of other places. To go start lighting some fires in other people's lives. When this begins to stir in your heart and the reality of it begins to stir in your heart, you'll be crying out, oh God, fill the parking lot with cars. Fill the, fill the, fill the building with souls. Oh God, I cannot, I cannot possibly abide remaining unfruitful. You get, you'll get serious about it. <laughs> it'll produce a cry in your spirit. I tell you, you'll begin to get excited. You'll begin to it'll be more passionate about anything you've ever yelled about. Huh? It'll become a shout. It'll become a cry of desperation. It'll sound like you're about to die and you need some help. You're drowning and you need somebody to throw you a life rope. Think about it, people. Father, that's righteousness. Responding to that which God, the Holy Ghost, has made available to us, that he's given to us. The responsibility, taking him to heart. If you are consumed with cares of this life, you'll never take it to heart. If you're concern, consumed with the pleasures of this world, you'll never take it to heart. If you're consumed with riches, you'll never take it to heart. If you're all caught up and concerned about what you're going to wear, what you'll eat, you'll never take it to heart. You'll never take it to heart. I tell you right now, you can work a job and never one moment in time be concerned about what you'll wear or what you'll eat. Because it ain't even about that. Because I've done it and many other people have done it. And it didn't slow us down one bit in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's too many witnesses against you. There's too many mothers that raised 19 kids. That raised them full of the Holy Ghost and never missed a meeting. And never missed a beat huh, in their consecration to God. And people got one, ch one child and they think that they're basically about to lose their mind. Don't have time for anything. I had a person, I mean, you don't know what it's like to have to wash clothes for three people. So it's really consuming all your time. <laughs> really, it's it is you need a new washing machine. <laughs> if the washing 
closed for three people is your excuse for why you're going to respond to me about why you're not in the meetings, why you don't give yourself to the reading of the word, why you don't give yourself to the spirit. You need yourself a new wife machine. What are you doing? It on a rock? <laughs> because it wasn't long ago that they were using a rock and scrub boards and still making it to the meetings. Hallelujah. Uh, and participating with the program and flowing in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. They had a song and a praise with that rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They had a shout in the Dostokadonea with that scrub. Hallelujah. Oh, you can begin to do all things to him. <laughs> oh, you can begin to ask. You can begin to live as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. <laughs> you can begin to let him be right in the fire of your heart, the meaning of your soul, the purpose of your living, the purpose of your existence. Hallelujah. Oh, this abundant life. It's the abundant life. Let Jesus be at the center of it. It's the abundant life. Yes. Say, Holy Ghost, I don't want to move without you. It'll be the abundant life. Yes. This is righteousness. Yes. Amen. I got a responsibility to have a good attitude if I drive up to the, to the drive out window at, at uh, In N Out Burger. And if you say McDonald's, we need to just help you. <laughs> But there was a time that all we could afford was McDonald's. But there was two of our anniversary. I took our anniversary dinner. It was at McDonald's. <laughs> huh, baby? That was it. And we prayed over that food. <laughs> and asked the Lord to bless that food. That was it. That's all we could afford. That's all the money we had. Everything else went for milk and diapers. You have to have a, I mean, come on. The guy came to wait on us, wanted us to know if we wanted any mixed drinks to get everything kicked away because we're having a birthday party. I said, we've already been drinking. <laughs> he said, wow. I said, yeah, we just came from church. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what is he going to see? A bunch of frowny, upset people arguing with each other. I don't believe I'm here. Do you hear what the pastor said about me? <laughs> That's unrighteousness. That's not willing to carry the, the responsibility of the great blessing that's been given to you. And you, get, and you and I get to live the life of Jesus, be his ambassadors. He says to us, go for me. Whew. When we were baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, we were only baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire because God saw in our heart a willingness to go for Him. Amen. And if you got anything else, it ain't the real thing. Amen. And that's what I look for when, I, when people come and say, I want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Well, what are you going to do with it? <laughs> well, I thought I was going to speak in tongues. Well, yeah, you know, that is, what, that is the overflow of it, but it's for a whole lot more reasons than that. It's the promise of the Father. It's what Jesus, this Jesus' ministry to empower you and me to go change the world. Amen. And he defines what it means to change the world, to preach the gospel, and then to believe and are baptized, the same shall be saved, and teach him to, to do everything that I've commanded you, to observe it, to do it. Amen. Which is bringing him into the local church. We see the model of it in the New Testament. I'm speaking faith in your spirit. I'm not speaking discouragement. I'm speaking by the spirit of the Lord. This is the ministry of righteousness. I can't help it if people hear it in an unrighteous way. I can't help it if people hear it in a prideful, competitive, self-interest, self-accommodating way and get all offended at the challenges of God. This is the ministry of righteousness. This is the ministry of empowerment. This is not the ministry of defamation and condemnation. It's supposed to get you all excited and delighted that God's empowered you to do this thing. I'm taking a hold of the faith of it. Hallelujah. I'm getting rid of the compromises. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
And such trust have we in Christ. Towards God. Wow. I mean, because when you really think about it, you're kidding me? The Holy Ghost wrote, I mean, this is like the Holy Spirit did this. This is something that God, the Holy Spirit has already given me. It's like the finger of God is written on my heart. I mean, I'm like it. I'm like Moses holding up the tabernacle, the, the, the tablets of stone saying, here it is. I'm in the hands of God and he's holding up before the world. Here it is. Here's my testimony. That's me. That's you. Come on. Come on. Man, you start doing that. You start delighting yourself in the Lord. Come on, man. When the songs, when the songs are, when the songs are, 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 are slow and, 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 and they're just, and they're sweet and they're deep. Go deep, go deep, go deep with them, go deep with them. When the, when the songs are, are fast and, and exciting, go, go deep with it, go deep with it, go deep, go deep with it, go deep with it. It's not playtime. Something that's so sacred. Good. So you got, it's, got to, it's got to have the depths of our response, depths, depths of our passion associated with it. And Father's empowered us to be able to do that. Yes. He's, not waiting for us to, he's not waiting for us to supply, you know, the goods. He's supplying them yes. with explosive power, yeah. dunamis, Good. and rivers of expression. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Just see it. Just see it. Just live in it. And, and, and once again, and so I just preempted verse 5. Not that we're sufficient of ourselves, for God is our sufficiency. We don't have to look to ourselves to be able to accomplish this because all of a sudden, what, I'm a living epistle? What, what? I got this kind of responsibility? This is what Christ has done for me? Yeah, but it looks and it is. But you don't look to yourself to do it. There's a supply coming to you. There's a fountain that you can drink of. There's a rock that you can ask for water from. And, 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 a, and, a, and rivers are going to be of expression. Divine power is going to be seen through you. See, we're ministers of the Spirit. We're ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kill, kills, but the Spirit gives life. I'm a Spirit minister. Hallelujah. I'm going to go right to your heart. I'm going to go right to the supernatural need. I'm going to read your mail. I'm going to declare to you what God sees and what God knows. I'm going to come to you with the authority of God and set you free. I'm not going to ask you if you want to be free. I'm going to liberate you. I'm not going to give you a little Sunday school lesson. I'm not going to contrast and compare evolution versus creation. I'm going to come as a minister of the Spirit, hallelujah, a minister of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to come right to the heart of the matter, the very power of God that touches you in the depths of your being. Hallelujah. Amen. Able ministers of the New Testament. Amen. That's righteousness. And Paul spent some time just helping us to understand and contrast this. He says, look at what the ministry of death written in the, and engraved in stone did. It was glorious, but, you know, it was death. It was the ministry of death. And the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses because of the glory and of his countenance, which glory was to be done away. How shall not the ministry of the Spirit be rather glorious? Hey, what ministry of the Spirit? This ministry of Spirit that is coming forth from you and me. Saying is, we are the men of epistles of Christ, written by the Spirit of the living God, by the finger of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Able ministers of the New Testament, by the Spirit, not by the intellect, because we've given ourselves to have now an enlarged capacity to move with Him, to know how to connect with Him, to know how to speak by Him, to make decisions according to what He declares to us and reveals to us. He becomes our decider. Hallelujah. And that don't just happen automatically. That happens because you're willing to be obedient, and that's righteousness. You're willing to walk with God. You're willing to do it God's way. It is all set up as you read His Word and how you respond to His Word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's who you and me. That's who us. That's who we are. That's who us are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Naomi's having a whole move of the Spirit over here. She's had complete deliverance. <laughs> Amen. She's just rejoicing in the good things of God. 
hands raised, just excited about God sitting on the edge of your seat, feeling good. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We just appreciate everybody who threw in there and began to pray and intercede. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And we're not going to let her backslide. Yeah, we're not going to let her go back to the former way. We're not going to go back to the former interaction, former conduct. Amen. Amen. It's, just too, it's just too horrific. <laughs> With an emphasis and underline under the horror part of that. Listen, I'm, I'm talking to you, dear people. I'm talking to you. Listen to me by the web and by the YouTube. I'm talking to us. You want to give people your response, your attitude, your knowledge? You just shut down the flow of the Holy Ghost. You just grieve the Spirit of God. You just yielded to something that's working counter to you and I learning how to flow in the realms of heaven. People ask me a question, I'm not going to give them a response out of my intellect. By the help and the grace of God, I'm not going to give them. I, 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 I made it over and over again. Father, inquiring of you. And all I am is your oracle. I am your living epistle. Speak to me, O Lord. Speak, Lord. Huh, come on now, people. I'm just telling you how to have a response. It's just not about me. It's about you. It's every one of us. It's just, he didn't say Pastor Mark is a living epistle. <laughs> he said, eh, this is, this is what we give it to yeah. all of us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Lord, hallelujah. Yeah. Can you imagine a culture change in the church where you don't have a bunch of people watching a couple of folks flow in the Holy Ghost and then judging whether or not the meeting was any good? That's called entertainment. Well, they really showed and performed for us tonight. Boy, the anointing is really strong in their life. Oh, you leave all the work to us. Do you want to be that way? No. Does that sound terrible? Yes. It does. That sounds sick, doesn't it? Yes. That's twisted. Yes. <laughs> it's okay for the lost. It's okay for the people who are just learning. They've just been coming around for the past five, six months. In China, you know, we go and minister to people. They've only been saved for six months, and they're there for a three-month training to go back and be the pastor of the church. Nine months, they're pastor. Nine months from being born again. If there's any call of God upon their life, nine months from being born again, they pastor. We need to do that. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? He says, For if the ministry of condemnation be glory, much more did the ministry of righteousness exceed in glory. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in respect by reason of the glory that excelleth. For if that which is done away with is glorious, much more that which remains is glorious. Now listen, I wanted to say this before I get too far away from it. The new covenant was seen on Moses' face when they couldn't look. It was seen on his face. There was a glory of the old covenant seen on his face too. A glory that was to be done away with. But there was even another greater glory seen on his face. A glory that they had to veil because they did not want to look into the doing away of what they, had, what they were in to see the new covenant that was about to come. Which is, which is the ministry of the Spirit. Which is... Yes the expression of the living epistle, which is righteousness. Blessed is the man who does judgment and righteousness at all times. Thank you, Lord. Us. Thank you, you need to learn how to walk in the Spirit. Amen. You need to learn how to depend upon the Spirit. That means you're going to have to shut down that thing that was developed in your school of education. A. A. Allen said he went into a library and all he saw was demons. And it comes from a pretty good source seeing the authority that demons gave, that, that God gave him over demon spirits to cast them out. All the in mentally insane people that he was able to deliver. He saw intellectualism as nothing but a demonic power at work in the minds of men to shut down the moving of God in their life. I mean, when I first read that, I, was, I must have been 18 years old when I first read that. 17 or 18 years old. And it was sometime just before that, my dad said to me, he said, listen, look, son, you're going to go. It was, no, it was after that. He said, listen, you're getting, a, you're getting ready to go into the realms of intellectualism, which is a power 
that is next to the power of God, and it's a God-defying power. It is, the, it is the supreme activity of Satan's working in men. You need to be careful. Because it produces a pride of life. It produces a self-reliance. It produces an arrogance. It produces a, a dependency upon yourself, a wisdom that you gain out of that's earthly and is sensual, and now you don't go after the things that are heavenly. If you're stupid... But you can, be, you, can, you can give yourself to study and knowledge and understanding as Daniel did and not be stupid Amen. and totally rely upon the Holy Ghost yes. and get dreams and get Amen. visions and yes. get revelation Amen. and interact with angels. Yes. Hallelujah. His, think about Daniel. He was interacting with all the top angels. All the top angels. He interacted with all the top angels. Gabriel comes to him. Then Michael comes to him. There was another, helping out, another one helping out that he didn't name. Top angels. Taken to the top, very top uh, of a uh, 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 position in the kingdom of God, all because of his testimony, Amen. all because of his ministry, of getting down on his knees, crying out to God, worshiping and praising God, even when it was, even when it was against the law. I'm talking to you people. Yeah. God's looking for some valiant folks. Yeah. Listen, God's leaving no one out. There's some people, they, you're still under condemnation. And, and this is offensive to you. And you feel threatened by it. That's demonic. And you need to get delivered. And the best thing I can say to you is you lay hands on your own head and say, in Jesus' name, I, you foul spirit of hell, you leave me alone. That's about the best thing I can think for you because you got to go with you. And you're the one who gave yourself to that stuff and you're the one who's going to stop it. Because the power of God is made, made, is made as much available to you as it is to anyone else. And I'm going to tell you right now. The power of God is made as much available to you as it is to Jesus. As he was to Jesus. And that's pretty radical. The power of the Holy Ghost is made as much available to you as it was to the Apostle Paul. All your excuses are meaningless. All your reasons, all your explanations, all your rationalizations, all lies. Yeah. It's about time you get real, fall down on your face and say, God, I can't live without what you commanded. Yeah. That's righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. Responding to God, not making it, and it's not make, make, playing pretend, playing make believe. The girls brought me a little make believe tea cup thing where they want to give me make believe tea. I said, Where is the tea? <laughs> I said, there's nothing in this cup. It's empty. I'm not playing the game. Get something in here, and then we're going to have this. There's nothing on this plate. You're trying to serve me something? Give me a break. We're not playing pretend. Oh, but you're supposed to just play pretend. God gave you an imagination. You're supposed to use it. No, I'm going to bring that thing into captivity. Amen. Hallelujah. You can sit there. Go ahead. If you want to go ahead and work a miracle for me and have those teacups empty and that plate empty, and you want to go ahead and see some, uh, some miracle tea, suddenly developing that teacup. That's what we're doing here. Let's go with you. I'll hook up in faith with you. Believe God that this miracle can take place. Huh? Come on, people. There's people in here tonight, you don't ever believe that you'll raise anyone from the dead. There's people here tonight that don't, you really, in your heart of hearts, you don't believe you'll ever raise anybody from the dead. That's unrighteousness. There's people here tonight, you've never dreamed big enough to even believe that you could be translated because you're so stuck in the realms of human thinking and human reasoning. You're not even allowed, you in prison, you're not even allowed to have the freedom to venture out there and even have those beautiful thoughts. Isn't that terrible? Yeah. Isn't that terrible? Yeah. I pray in Jesus' name, everyone to get liberated tonight, set free. Yeah. Hallelujah. I pray you start dreaming big. I, start pray, I pray you start demanding what God's demanded of us. Hallelujah. You wake up in the morning expecting signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen. Only believe. Uh, or Roberts used to have his worship team sing this all the time. Only believe. Only believe. All things are possible. Only believe. I have the Holy Ghost will come and begin to sing that song in me many different times. You have the Holy Ghost come sing songs in you? It's just like all of a sudden you have a mean, you're just walking, doing, riding going to a place, been praying, asking God about something, and all of a sudden, a song will become real loud on the inside of you. Not, some, like a song, not like a jingle in your head. You know how a jingle gets in your head? 
you know, 1 800 77 loans. You know, a jingle, right? <laughs> a jingle gets you. It's not the same. That's aggravating, ain't it? It's, a, it's, a, it's this flood. It's this thing. It's this song that comes in the heart, comes and overwhelms you. Begin, huh? Only believe. <laughs> Only believe. It's the realm to the Spirit. Who oh, God? It's a, yeah, it's a wonderful. See, there's a lot of people dead to this. They don't even know this realm exists, yeah. even in church. Yeah. They're not just out there in the world. In church, they're dead to this realm. They don't even know this realm is existing. There's people we pray and uh, pray over and cry out to and preach to, and it's like you know, 50 years later. Hey, what'd you just say? <laughs> when did God show you that? Oh, about 50 years ago. Well, why never hear, hear it? Well. I've been asking the same question. No, there's this whole realm, of it, this glorious realm. God made us align to this realm when we were born again. We were shut off from this realm when we were dead in our trespasses and sin. Jesus Christ opened the door so we could sit, have a place to sit at the table, to eat from the master's hand, to drink from his cup, to be loved by him, to be coveted by him, Ha, ha, to be, he so loves us so much, he's jealous of us. <laughs> he is possession. He, he, he determined greatness upon our life. He's determined great success for our life. He's determined to use us, endow us in every way with all that he has, resources with his best stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. His best vehicle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. His best everything. It's the ministry of righteousness. Amen. It's the ministry of you're holy and you're acceptable. Amen. You're mine. You're the book that I wrote. Wow. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 I thought I was going to get through this a little bit quicker so I could just talk about people's responses to Jesus. Just to help you understand something, when you begin to, start, begin to talk about something, and if there is a Holy Ghost flow on a Holy Ghost anointing, and you just pounding away intellectually, just shut up. Just stay with what's, just stay with where the anointing is. Stay where the manifest glory is. Huh? Stay where the flow is. Thank you, Jesus. I don't want any of you going to work tomorrow the way you've been going to work. I want you to go that much more lit up with the glory of heaven. Yes. I, don't want you, I don't want you to get, don't get wrapped up in the stuff. Don't, go, don't get wrapped up in the stuff. Begin to, begin to get real with God and say, Father, give me a divine appointment. Lord, I want souls. I want you to teach me how to move in to get to faith for souls. I know it's for you. It's all about reaching, at, you know, searching out and reaching those that are lost. Yes. And I want, to be, I, want to, I want to understand how to move with you in this. I'm telling you right now, Papa's going to go, oh. yes. if he could say praise God, he would. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. This is great. This is great. This is exactly what I want you to do. Let me empower you with the resources to do it. Hallelujah. And anytime anything, any, any kind of pain or something comes on you and you're in a situation like that, you refuse it. You get radical. You start jerking yourself around. Huh? You start doing, you know, I'm telling you, you get radical. You hurt yourself if necessary. Yes. Kind of thing. Amen. Saying no. You don't have it. Don't claim it. Don't allow it. It's a place of faith. You don't allow anything to impose itself upon you. You don't allow temptation to impose itself upon you. You don't let it go so far. Amen. Yes. Amen. You tell it to go. Amen. Get away. Yes, and then, of course, you know, after a while, praise God, we have the Lord walking with him. Those things that before would tempt you, you hate them. Amen. It's a disgust to you. Yes. You think, how could have I ever been so twisted? How could have I ever been so foolish? How could I have ever been so blind as to even have that be able to draw me away? It's so ugly, it's so horrible, horrible. That's what Papa does. He teaches us love, righteousness, hate, iniquity. That's righteousness. 
He's our perfecter and trusting him to be our perfecter is righteousness. He's a provider and trusting him to be our provider is righteousness. He, he, ha, he, is a, he is our protector and trusting him to be our protector is righteousness. Taking it up and taking up your own calls and doing your own thing is unrighteousness. Righteousness is really encapsulated in trusting God and that's why God imputed unto Abraham for right, his faith for righteousness. Why? Because he trusted God. Because it's absolutely, I'm going to trust you. You say, you tell me to, do you tell me to cast out Ishmael? No problem. He didn't, he didn't hear, hear Aaron going, look, God, come on, what's going on? You tell me, look, I, look at all the sacrifices I made. I threw Ishmael out of the house. I left, I left my home in Ur. He didn't even reading the Lord, the, you know, the manipulation list. You saw a continued response of privilege, privilege to obey you, God. Privilege to learn. Huh? Listen, it isn't God's fault that some of you slow learners. Father never determined to put you through half the stuff you put yourself through. His way was a much shorter distance between where you, where he pulled, where he called you out of darkness, huh, into his inheritance. I'm gonna just finish. I'm gonna just wrap this up real quick for you. Hallelujah. It says Moses was put, verse 13. Moses put a veil on his face that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look into the end of that which was abolished. It was so glorious what was shining from his face. But even though it was so glorious and so powerful and so radiant and so full of the life of God and the spirit of God and the expression of the supernatural, it still wasn't everything God wanted for us to have. He's got something better. It still ain't, it still ain't up to what, still wasn't up to the level of the manifestation of his glory that he's purposed to be expressed through our life. He's still talking about being a living epistle here. He's still talking about being a person of the Spirit here. Huh. Full of the Holy Ghost, the temple of God where God dwells. Come on, people. We've given too much attention to that which matters nothing. We've, we've labored too much for that which perishes with the using. We've been too captivated by temporal things. You're going to have to break away now. Be a little bit challenging for you because everybody else is doing something different. And the press is on. But oh, come on, do it. Come go away where Jesus goes away. Go up into the mountain to pray. Go alone in a place to pray. Get alone with God even when the glory is flowing out. Find a place of submission to your parents, those who are over you in the Lord. Learn who your mom and dad is in the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be obedient children to the Lord. Hallelujah. Are you, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. I'm speaking a little allegorical there and prophetic, but, but their minds were blinded for until this day remained the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day, when Moses has read, the veil is upon their heart. They can't understand. There's a reason for that. I'm not going to go into that. It was, but I'm going to tell you right now, the veil is there, the inability to understand the things of the Spirit and the things of God's working and the things of God's glory was because of disobedience, because of hardness of heart, because God would bring his word with his love, with his glory, with his beauty, with his splendor, with his power, and yet people would not do it. They would not listen. They wanted to walk. In. They were stubborn, stiff-necked. They wouldn't turn their head in God's direction. And so, you know, it extends as a warning to every one of us. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Praise God. In other words, the Father says, He's opened up the door for the Jews. Yeah. As soon as they turn to Jesus, that veil will be taken away. It's not like that everybody's, you know, under this place of blindness and they can't get out of it. No, 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 no. The church began with, the church, when the church began, it was all Jewish people. All people from, somebody said, well, if, if Jesus is truly the, who you say he is, why does his own people reject him? No, that was not the way it was. 
the church started, they were all Jews. Right. All of them, every one of them, all the apostles, Jews. Right. All the churches full of Jews. Yes. It was later that Gentiles came in. Amen. And there's still many, many who would be of that nationality who walk with God. Praise the Lord. There's the promise. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. <laughs> now the Lord is that spirit. What spirit? The spirit that takes away the deception, that takes away the veil, huh? that takes away the blindness of heart and the blindness of mind, that takes away the hardness of heart and the hardness of mind. Isn't he wonderful? Yeah. What does that Holy Ghost do? Freeze you up. Yeah. Liberate you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Breaks off the power of every mind-blinding spirit. Praise God. That's why today's the day of a new beginning. You don't have to continue to live, live, as, live as you've lived. But we with unveiled faces, look and stare in the mirror. Look at here. But we with unveiled faces behold in the mirror the glory of the Lord. When you look in the mirror, what do you see? Well, it's not a trick question. When you look in the mirror, what do you see? No, when you look in the mirror, what do you see? Yeah. You see you. When we look in the mirror and our reflection in view of what God has done for us, we see the glory of the Lord Jesus, the glory of the living God. And what, guess what happens when you start seeing that glory? Guess what happens? You changed. You mature. You grow. You step over into a liberated realm of greater freedom, of greater access to the things that God has made available to us. Huh? Huh? You got yourself some skills. Hallelujah. 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 The boys were watching. Boys were watching me get on the dozer and just open the thing wide open, put it in the top gear, and just plow. Just go as fast as that thing would go. Just smooth the road. They're like, wow. And I said, you guys hop up in it. And it's like. <laughs> They're digging ditches and destroying the road. I said, but I, and, and so it's like, I can't do this. Oh, yeah, you can. Would you, what's, here, let me come here and show you. It's just kind of like flowing in the anointing. You got to feel it. You got to sit in here and just relax. Because I had the radio on. I had classical, because all I could give was classical music. I had classical music blaring. They got in, they had to turn it off because they couldn't, they couldn't think with that on there. <laughs> Tearing the thing up, destroying. You can destroy a, a road in no time in a dozer. Plow, lift it up. Plow, lift it up. Got it there. Just, just sit here, just relax. Just relax. See, turn it on. Don't even try to think about it. Just relax and feel it. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Your skill set. I ain't turn this thing wide open, put it in the top gear. Just go. Just relax. God, the Holy Ghost shows you, come here, show you how to relax. Just feel it. Give you some skills. Do some amazing things. People just stand there and go, wow, how do you do that? Where did you learn how to do that? You had a little time to task. Where'd you learn? How to prophesy like that? Where'd you learn hmm, how to minister out of the realms of the spirit like that? Where did you learn to love like that? When you, where'd you learn to joy like that? Where'd you learn to talk to God like that? Where'd you learn to hear from God like that? Stand with me. <laughs> 